The new Superman film Man of Steel opens next Friday. Early buzz is good. Joining us now is screenwriter, actor, and director Kevin Smith, who famously was once tapped to write his own Superman script and who has a very scientific theory about this important question. How does Superman shave? We'll get to that in a moment. Hey, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. Now, you have not seen Man of Steel. Personally, I think they should have let you, you know, go attend an early screening you or something. The more I think about it, listening to your intro, I'm like, what am I doing here? I have nothing to do with this movie. What's <laughs> I worked on a Superman movie back in 96 that never got made. And the only reason I guess I'm involved now is because I like him an awful lot. And we're talking about minutia that has to do with fictional characters. Like, that's something I've built my whole career on, talking about the the intricacies of superhero relationships and now like nearly 20 years later after I started my career you can actually in a mainstream like Gillette campaign right. ask a really funny question like how does he shave and, and this I, is this is what blows my mind don't like, tell us yet I won't okay. I won't ruin it but they're like this is a conversation you've had with your comic book friends and your geeky friends for years and years right. my mother called me the other day she goes I saw you on I saw you on television I said doing what she goes talking about Superman's beard and I said oh right on I'm doing that for, I'm doing that lately that's yeah. my thing and she goes, how does he shave, Tiger? That's my mother. Your and mo I, so you never got, in a million years imagined. She's, and she's into it. Like, it's broached the mainstream. You've Comical seen the trailers. You've mainstream. seen the trailers. Do you like what you've seen in the trailers? I love what I've seen in the trailers, man. I saw, Once I saw the shot of, of Superman carries, carrying Lois Lane away from danger at a, a furious pace, and it was her performance, and Amy Adams' face of, like, the worst thing imaginable is right there, and this strange visitor from another planet is racing me away from it. I saw that moment, man, I was like, they nailed it. That is comic books. That's when you read comic books, that's what you look for, is that moment of truth where, you know, somebody is there for you at the worst moment of your life. And, and that's communicated on every issue of a comic book. But somehow Zack Snyder found a really truncated two second shot. You look at the yeah. shot, it's like this. But he found a way to communicate that joy, that yearning that one has when they open a comic book going like, I hope somebody's going to be there for me when I need them. And you're a thing. big comic book fan. You own a comic book In store. In size and in spirit. <laughs> a huge comic book fan. Once tapped to write a, a script for Superman. Uh, failed fa miserably. A long, hilarious, <laughs> we won't even go into a tale on YouTube from right. you about why the deal unraveled. I just want to know, if, if you could put Superman in any scenario, Kevin, yeah. what would it be? Um, let me see. Uh, any scenario whatsoever. Superman would have been there for a young fat boy who was asked to get off a plane because he was too fat to fit in a seat. <laughs> That's the scenario. He would have come into the plane and been like, I think he'll fit fine. Everyone's like, Superman. And then he it defends me. There's nothing wrong with this, this large boy. He just, he had too many potato chips. And then off he goes. And then I get to look at the flight attendant the whole trip and be like, Superman. He Superman. That was Superman. Saved me. <laughs> Save, literally save me, I'm still on this plane. All right, uh, I don't know where in the world you came up with that, but we'll just, we'll just imagine. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Gillette's ad campaign, how does the Man of Steel shave? You were on there with a video with Bill Nye, the science guy, you're all sort of postulating what you think. You came up with the Kryptonia rocket theory. What is that? Basically, I maintain in every iteration of the Superman mythos, he always comes to Earth in a rocket ship. I said, if the rocket ship comes to Krypton, it's gonna be strong as Kryptonian forces he is under Earth's yellow sun. So basically you take pieces of the rocket ship, hammer it tight, he could hammer it pretty damn flat, he's Superman, and shave with that. You know, Bill Nye pretty is good. talking about like, you just need to grind his beard down with something equally strong. And I'm like, well, what is that, Bill? Yeah. Like, you didn't tell us what that part was. Um, Mayim Bialik, who's actually like very smart PhD and whatnot, and brain doctor of sorts, head doctor, if you will, uh, her theory was, BS. It was predicated on <laughs> fantasy. I felt really smart when I heard her theory. I was like, I'm smarter than her. But what, um, what about this one? I, I, I picture this. A giant spider comes along and eats the beard off Superman's face. What do you think? That takes me right back to 96, I'll be <laughs> yeah. honest with you. Sitting in a film executive's office telling me, no, a giant spider is going to play. Trust yeah. me, trust me. There's right. no giant spider no in this giant... movie, though. I've seen every trailer. Not and so the far. ship, so far, no, 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 nothing. Although the, the one Kryptonian ship, Zod's ship, looks like a giant flea, and that's close to a spider. But Last question. Yes. Superman, still cool with younger people now? They've had so many superheroes out there. Um, I think 
I, honestly, I think Man of Steel is going to do a good job in making him cool again. It's tough. You know, people, writers will tell you over and over again, Superman's a tough character because you're talking about somebody who's all-powerful. And right. he's got one weakness. As long as you know, there's kryptonite involved, then you've got maybe a shot at a story. But otherwise, you've got a guy who is invulnerable. So I think how they're doing it, like if you look at the new campaign and, and everything they keep, like the Jor-El character keeps going, like he'll inspire yeah. people, he'll lead people, but not like people can be Superman, because you can't. You have to be from another planet and whatnot. So there used to be a bit of a divide. I think that's why Batman appeals to a lot of people, because like you put on a suit and you are Batman. Right. So with Superman, there's a bit more work to do, but it looks like with the trailers, they've done it. Like it really looks like they found a way to present Superman in the 21st century without having people be like, this is corny. Yeah. That's pretty badass. All right, Kev, you heard her here. Kevin Smith, thanks so much for being with Thank us. You. Movie opens next Friday.